episode 11 of the Long Haul Podcast. We're back after a long week listening to Garfield talking to us and uh, getting the community's feedback on the interview. Uh, I'm Nine. I'm here as always with my co-host, Kerry. Hey, man. What's up? And uh, we got a special guest this week. Uh, you're going to have to help me slightly how to pronounce your name. Metzilie? Uh, Metzilie, but like mess is fine. So just say mess. Uh, that sounds much easier, Mess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the cast, Mess. Thank you. Thanks for joining. So we uh, decided to grab you because uh, you just came off of winning the BrainScan's uh, final tournament. Congratulations, first of all. Yeah, thanks. It was a lot of fun to play. I, I actually, uh, to be quite honest, I wanted to make this kind of a little bit of a roundtable uh, discussion with some other players from the tournament, but due to my poor organization skills, uh, I could not get the other people to answer. But we got the best. We, j we got the best. Of course. We got the most important one. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about you uh, for a bit before we move on to other topics. Uh, what's your gamer background? This is an interesting one because I Googled you up. Oh, uh, yeah, so I played uh, League of Legends, like, semi-professionally, like, mm -hmm. I was close to professional, so I won the tournament in Russia, and, like, I was at an IM with the same Russian team, but I didn't, didn't quite make it through, and then I've played, uh, like, I played Duelist quite a bit, too, the, another card game, I won some money in there, and, uh, like, a Hand of the Gods card game, too, that I won some in, so I played a lot, like, I... I'm competitive and I play a lot, and card games have been my thing for quite a lot of years now. I've just not played the biggest ones, the games. I, uh, I, I saw that you made money, and now I think it's interesting that you did not consider, consider yourself a pro. Is that because you were working at the same time, or because you just did not make it to the, like, the major league gaming type thing? Or? Uh, because I didn't make enough to make a living, I'd say. Like, I think a pro is someone that can play the game and live from the game. Mm -hmm. I'd say, but like I spent my year, like I spent a lot of time trying and I had like a situation where I didn't have to work and I was just trying with League. The other games were more hobbies. Um, you're Swedish, right? Yeah. And do you live in Sweden or? Yeah. Because, because probably, um, so like for example, I'm Portuguese and I live in Switzerland. So if I wanted to be a pro gamer, so supporting myself in Portugal would be much, much easier than in Scandinavia or Switzerland or whatever. So I can imagine also the bar is much higher because the, the amount of money that you need to make in dollars generally, it's probably since the quality of life and the level of living in Scandinavia is quite high, that probably makes it a bit harder as well, no? Yeah, it's also league. Like I was good enough, I think. Like I was quite high in in the like highest series and I was progressing but it was just uh, I just got burned out really because it's like you have to play constantly and it has to be your entire life basically for those kinds of games so it's more like I got burned out and I felt like mm, I can probably make it but I don't sure if I want that lifestyle mm -hmm. so at the moment you, you're playing artifact uh, but at a pro level let's say it but I, I suppose it, it also doesn't pay the bills yeah, I mean, I play the tournaments I can find and I do well in them, but it's not like I'm trying to support myself with it. Uh, it's interesting that you played Duelist. I played that game for a while and I thought I thought that game was one of the best things ever, except I did it come out on mobile? Because I was waiting for the longest time to play that thing on my phone and then no. it never came out. Huh? Yeah, and they stopped updating it too, so it's kind of in the... Like uh, there were the team behind it is working on a different game, so it hasn't been a, any updates for a long time. But yeah, I've spent a lot of time on Duelist, and I was highest ranked there as well, and like it was a lot of fun. Cool. Any any history on paper cards or? Not really. Like not more than like my brother played Magic, and uh, I played some of his decks a few times, but not really. Yeah. But was that the? Gave you the will to play our, like digital trading card games, or did it just came out naturally? No, Hearthstone came out, and I had that as my like side game while I played uh, League, and uh, like I enjoyed it, but it wasn't the kind of thing I wanted to play more. And then I saw Duelist on some 
uh, Hearthstone streamer stream, and then I tried that out, and I got really hooked because I thought that was a lot more fun. And I played that like a lot, and I got good at it, and I started joining the tournaments I could find and stuff like that because you like, yeah, as a hobby. So were you like one of the lucky ones that got into the beta for Artifact, or you only just started playing when the game came no. out? No. Yeah, and when the game came out. Did you, uh, in other words, so how, how did you listen to the interview last week, and what did you think of it? What, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I listened to it. Uh, don't, be, don't be afraid to burn me. It's, uh, it's quite, quite OK. <laughs> yeah, by now we're used to it. No, no, it was really good. It was really good. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just a, such a sad situation, I feel like, because as they were saying, like the game is, like the gameplay is really fantastic, I think. Like I'm, like they were saying, it's, it has this epic feeling to it, and it feels like I'm in charge of how the game's turned out uh, in such a high degree, even. Yeah, I don't know. And it, uh, yeah, I don't know. As they were saying, I think the issues were elsewhere than the actual gameplay. Frustrating, yeah, yeah, yeah. In any case, uh, let's uh, let's maybe uh, let's maybe focus a little bit on uh, on constructed today because um, I mean I'm sure you're you're a pretty amazing draft player as well. But um, since you just came off of winning um, Brain Scans League, do you want to kind of um, maybe give an overview of how? You have seen the artifact constructed meta evolving since the last uh, small patches, where where you know the items changed and so on. And after Axe cheating death and Drow being nerfed, how, how did you see the meta evolving? What's your uh, opinion on that? Well, it seems like green has disappeared completely, and I like it hasn't changed that much. Like Monod, Monored has been coming more popular and more, and. Uh... We have the mono blues still being quite dominant, and then there are these red blacks that, I mean, I have a red black that I bring to like half of my tournaments or something like when it's other tournaments. So I was debating bringing that over my mono blue, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's like it doesn't change too much since they haven't there haven't been any big changes, so I don't know. I think, I think one of the more interesting questions that I want to ask is, do you feel that the nerfs were necessary when they released them? Um, I'm really happy that Cheating Death got changed, and I think Drow's spell maybe needed a nerf, but maybe Jasper Daggers being introduced was enough. Like, I think it got hit, it got hit uh, too hard. Uh, Axe, I'm not sure. Probably maybe some stat line, but I don't feel like the difference was massive, to be honest. But uh, I liked cheating death, death getting nerf. I really liked because I thought that was a stupid card, <laughs> to be fair. So we already had this conversation sometimes, in my, my opinion, and this is kind of made in stone, that I feel that nerfs in a game that is launched, so, so like a yeah, game had like two months tops. I just I just feel that we have cards that could just, well, they're only red. That's the biggest problem. You know, raise and uh, uh, smash their defenses would kind of work against the, the cheating death. And um, what's the name of that? The, uh, what's the, the hammer? That, I can't remember the hammer. The magic and yeah, the, uh, And there's the orb and stuff like that. I mean, we have cards to deal with cheating death. My point is, I think that, I think it was too harsh. When you when you nerf something, you shouldn't make a card go from like broken to trash. You know, my feelings is that I I didn't think they needed to be nerfed, and if they had to be nerfed, I just feel it was too harsh. Yeah, I can totally agree. Uh, I I didn't even think that cheating death was like too strong. It's more like it was frustrating for me. Like so, it was frustrating. The sign is what the issue I had with it. But uh, as I, as you're saying, if a card goes from being played and then just disappears, then it's probably not the best balance, I guess. And it was probably a bit rushed. Yeah, I generally have the impression that they kind of should have just waited until the next expansion. And um, Scaphi Elias kind of confirmed that the the mechanic of 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 the version two of Jasper Daggers was from was taken from the expansion set. He kind of said that during during the interview. So we know that there would be solutions coming for Gust 
eventually also for cheating death. Who knows? We don't know that. But uh, yeah, it was just a shame in my view that we we did not reach the place where the expansion could come out and correct some of those problems. But uh, well, we are where where we are. How how do you see Mono Blue's place in the meta? I mean, it is the most dominant. I think like we in this tournament, it was like top three was Mono Blue. So can't really say that it isn't the most dominant. But uh, I also don't feel like it's uh, like it's definitely not uncounterable or anything like that. It's uh, I feel like the meta is kind of okay. It's just a bit stale since it, there aren't any changes. But like I think the constructed meta is fine. But it's just and there's quite a few decks that are like reasonable. It's just too few people working on it. Yeah, that's one of the problems. Metas tend to not be so stale when there's a lot of community playing and a lot of players with imagination constructing decks. And since the the community for Artifact at this moment is uh, so small, I guess that's why we don't see new decks. Even though people say we need more cards and etc., I just feel that not enough people are playing to, uh, I don't know, figure out new decks and new combinations maybe. Yeah, I haven't even explored all the things I've been planning to explore because it's just not really much point to play Gauntlets set right now. Yeah, yeah. When when let, let me just ask another. When when um, when Mono Blue came up to power and it, it was the the new power deck. Eventually, sometime after, um, someone came up with Mono Red to counter Mono Blue. Do you feel that? Uh, mono blue players already learned enough to play around mono red, and mono red isn't that strong as a counter as it was before. I don't feel countered by mono red. Uh, I feel like mono blue is favored in that matchup. Uh, it's close, but I feel like mono blue is favored. I feel like my red black deck is favored against mono blue, but like for me, it's. Uh, I was asked uh, by some other guy to comment. And it was put on Reddit where like I can destroy this as the three decks I play are basically forming a triangle where my red black beats my mono blue, my mono blue beats my mono red, and my mono red beats my red black. That's how it's been for me. Uh, have you not uh, felt that green red has a place, or even mono green, as we've seen this week on the brain scans? The red green is too high rolly for me. It's not something I enjoy playing. It has its place, but I feel like it's not. Uh, one of the highest percentage win decks, you know, mm-hmm. you know, get what I mean. Uh, and the mono red green was like uh, the one I faced. I don't know. I've been wanting to try them out myself, but as I was saying, like queuing gauntlet just doesn't feel too much fun right now. Maybe I should find other players to scream with and try it out or something. But it seemed interest- interesting because uh, he was basically shutting down my eclipses by simply playing Revital Convoys and like these high HP minions and just, yeah, I felt useless unless I had Annihilation. Like I pulled out in the end, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to play against. Interesting. The dead color coming back. Yeah, like uh, as we were talking earlier, green was hit way too hard with the draw changes and shitting stuff, even though I didn't feel like they were uncalled for i feel like like the color just disappeared and that's really sad too i mean i i wanted to invite hacks uh, to the cast unfortunately i could not uh, get him in time but uh, I, this list is just a beauty so he's playing two cheating deaths a couple of emissary of the quorum a couple of thunderhide pack a uh, couple of thunderhide alpha and of course he's playing rix as well I mean, this is just uh, Eclipse is completely useless, uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt like I was pretty confident I was going to lose midway through that game, and then somehow I pulled through, I don't know. I also, uh, in an area tournament, I, felt I played against a completely different version of Mono Green that was about uh, out-healing, like with the Dreamer card, you know, and uh, the three mana Dreamer card, I think it's called. And then Roseleaf Rejuvenators, and that also was like wow. very, very interesting decks because it completely changed the game plan, and you have to like think in a completely different way. And it's something you're not used to playing against, so it's a complete. Yeah, exactly. I, I the the card that he uses that I find more most interesting is the Corrosive Mist, which is a card we never see. Yeah, I don't think he actually played it against me, so I <laughs> didn't think about it. But yeah, definitely. 
let's talk a, a bit about your your mono blue variation. Um, you, you got some cards that we, when we look at your deck, we're like, huh? Nine was is talking out the um, the um, the glyph of confusion. How 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 did you go around and and stick that in there? Um, well, it was around in the meta, like Kype was using it, right? And I started playing, trying it when I was trying Mono Blue, and I was just feeling like it has its place. Like, it's definitely not usable in every game, and it has its uses where it backfires, but so you have to be careful with it. But it also just straight up wins your games because it slows the down the opponent, and it, like, makes a lane that's already at 5 HP become yours anyway, because they can't place mini, uh, place Unistar. So I feel like it has its place as a one-off. A, a card normally I love to play in, um, in, in draft, and I've I never seen it in any constructed decks. Um, it, it's the Friendly Fire. The, the, you feel like that card has like no place in the Mono Blue at all? I mean, I can see it, Burke. Uh it's just that you have uh, already Eclipse and Inhalation on 6, so it becomes a bit heavy with more spells to use on 6. Mm. I think that's the main issue. Well, true, yeah. That makes makes sense. And you already have like a Glyph of Confusion too, so that 6 slot is already clampered. And it's just one of those cards I I have so much fun with it when I played it in draft that I I don't know. It's it, Yeah, I guess only if you didn't play Luna by some weird out of this world reason when you're playing blue uh that it could fit the deck yeah i can see having like one of them would be reasonable in if you're not playing the sky rough version well, one of the cards that we normally see on mono blue and uh, i see you, you you removed it completely initially we had like two and now i think you people only use one and you use none which is the, um, the conflagration you feel like the, it's too expensive for what it does or do you feel like ignites do a, a, enough of the job for removal well i feel like uh, against the other mono blue decks the ignites are enough because they are the ones that kill uh, the Kana minions. And uh, against Mono Red, it's just too much armor on the hero. So it's like it, too often it does nothing. So it's more like it's not great against Mono Blue, I feel like. And it's not great against Mono Red. So why should I have it in my deck? Yeah, okay. It's how I feel. I think it's mostly because since it's not piercing damage at a certain point, it's just not doing its job yeah it definitely can be useful but uh, yeah i think it makes more sense like uh, in the blue red decks often have it because of their they have bristol back so they have minus armor so upkeep damage is more important or something like that but i can see it with venot too because like i have more upkeep damage too but uh, yeah i don't know um i wanted to backtrack slightly and um... Can you can you give me or can you kind of explain or give your view on on whether forty three cards is really like the opti optimal um, optimal line here in the deck? Uh, so the forty three cards is because Mono Blue has so much draw anyway. So like these cunning plans and the compels, they don't really count that way. And you have the Aghanim Sanctum, so you can still get more stuff out. So I basically always play 40 cards in everything else except Mono Blue. And this was also because I was watching Hyped and Swim earlier on. And it seemed, and it's just been working really good because having these cunning plans and compels in the early turns helps a lot. And later on, you can usually just make them into another card. So it's basically because it has enough cards that just replace themselves. So having 43 isn't really an issue. I guess it also helps to dilute the bolts and the Thunder God's Wrath so you don't draw you don't draw as many in your opening hand, but you eventually kind of cycle into them and just draw them in the late game. Yeah, exactly. Like the cunning plan and compel are cards you want in the early game, but they don't really hurt you in the late game either. So it's like Yeah, it's they don't really Yeah, they don't have a I'm not sure how to describe it, but like they don't really fill the position of a card in the same way that other cards do, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I've played two compels quite often, but uh, I always play three cunning plants. 
Um, you're uh, you're playing the 44 cards. So th did you see any striking difference between playing 43, 44, maybe even more? Not really. As I said, uh, with the cunning plans and compels, they are like uh, they replace themselves. So it, it doesn't really change much. He has. So you got like three foresight, three arcane assaults. Even though we don't really play that much for the for the card draw, more for the uh, initiative, I guess. You got compels, cunning plans, and then one diabolic revelation. Yeah. That sounds right. A lot of card draw. <laughs> And the uh, item decks that draws to the, the cloak of cloak of what is it called cloak of endless I don't know whatever. Yeah, exactly. You're playing the cloak of endless carnage that your opponent was not. You're both playing two both of the Mocklies. and I think your opponent in the finals was not playing incarnation of Salamani either. Do you want to comment on the incarnation? Yeah, it's been doing amazing. Like I've cut an agonims for it. I'm not sure. Maybe you should have three agonims and that, but. I won games because I broke 80 because I have a Salamnia, or sometimes you just have a deck, like you have a game where you haven't gotten your four sites out, and then you can Salamnia and you just do everything on the same turn, and it's just, it's been the MVP for me, to be honest. It's the same, like, it's the same concept as Glyph, where it's like, you know, you need one, and having one makes, basically gives you win conditions, so having one in the deck makes it well worth it, but it's been much more important than Glyph of Confusion. I'm a, I'm a really um, kind of happy that you're playing three Traveler's Cloak um, and you just um, you just shaved off on the Stonehall Cloaks because uh, for a while I've had the impression that um, that switching to Cloaks and uh, Carnage might be uh, overall more positive. So uh, how did you feel about not playing the Stonehall Cloaks? I feel like Blue gets its money too late for Stonehall Cloaks to be a thing. I think it's a good card. But I'm in even in other decks. I've been starting to prefer like in decks where you get more money earlier. I starting to prefer the six mana cloak, the fur line mantle, that just gives eight instantly over the stone arc cloak. But here it's, it's the concept that I want HP earlier, and uh, I want it cheap because I usually don't get kills unless yeah I can't count on having enough gold for a stone arc cloak. That totally makes sense. That's something that's bothered me every time I tried Mono Blue in the past. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even close to mastering the deck, but I've had that uh, experience a few times. Uh, how do you feel about the mirror match at the moment? Do you think it's mainly like, uh, you know, does it boil down to some deck list details, or is it more the way you play, or how do you feel? Is it like fifty-fifty? Do you feel that you kind of with your list have an edge against your opponents? What? What are the important cards and so on? I feel like uh, most of the decks are quite similar. If I was going to choose one of the blue decks to play against other blue decks, I would probably play Skyroth Mage over both OD and Venomancer. Like go back to Skyroth Mage. Why is that? Because you have more ways to clear heroes, and it's very important to be able to do that at the correct turn. Mm -hmm. But uh, mono blue matchups are really interesting because it's a lot about like trying to set up both you need to set up like these wide boards that get enough damage in that your bolts can actually finish but you also need to be very patient with your cards like you don't need to clear don't clear just because you can clear clear when you can get damage in basically and let don't be afraid to just let him have a lane if uh, he can't get too much damage in on it like yeah i don't know it's uh, very different from playing against other decks yeah for sure if uh, if you if you wanted to give some advice to people how to win against mono blue, what would you what would you uh, advise? With mono blue or with uh, something else? With something else, like uh, just like in terms of game strategy, like is there something defining such as trying to kill every hero on turn five, or is there some kind of a tactic or strategy that you think tends to be uh, um, you know efficient against mono blue? I usually focus on the Luna, like keep the Eclipses down or make sure, like really do have, keep track of how many they charge and make sure she doesn't just win a lane with it. Like uh, Luna seems to be the most important part of Mono Blue, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. So tell me something. Uh, personally, uh, OD is one of those heroes that I, it doesn't, it, it doesn't do it for me. 
I'm one of the, I like it. I like the old school uh, Sky Raph. Do you feel you have so much removal? And I guess a lot of, a lot of the mono blues lately have, uh, have been putting OD and I, I suppose it's for the stun that you get because there's so much removal already. There's also that sweet, sweet up kill kills that sometimes we, we can achieve with, our, with Venomancer. With, it's like the best thing ever. Yeah, it helps a lot against uh, Mono Red, I think, because it's just more blockers and you can usually just, if you get him to live with one of the cunning plants or compels and it just keeps blocking for free, even though the Kana draws them elsewhere. Yeah, it's obviously so amazing when you get up keep kills. Like my red black is also running Tinker because, I don't know, uh, he's just really good, but upkeep kills are the best. Your your last drop is uh, is Kana. Normally, we we tend to see people put it in the in the fourth slot. Is what's what's your reasoning for put it in the last one? I've I, I did notice that uh, the the reason Mono Blues are all pushing it for the last one. If I'm not uh, incorrect, M my question is more like for other people that start playing Mono Blue or play uh, the, like the earliest versions, why Kana on the last drop? Because I want my minions to spread out in the early game. Like, it's, them coming to the same lane is better later. But uh, early, like the first rounds against uh, more aggressive lineups, with uh, like against one other mono blues, it's not super important. But against uh, the reds and the blacks, you want uh, your minions to be as spread out as possible, rather than all on the same lane in the first turns. And also... Uh, Zeus is usually a better target for any costs uh, because you can deal the seven damage instead of six. That's okay. That uh, makes sense. Uh, and I hadn't thought about um, the spreading so much part because we normally see early decks. I think they even had Kana in the flop, which was that was the most weird thing for me because that way you totally steal all mobs from other from other uh, lanes. Well, it's. It's also because you had Skyrof made, right? So uh, you don't want Skyrof machine to start. You don't really want Zeus in the start because it's better that he gets to go, like use his passive on the lane where it's suitable suitable to use his passive. But since I have Enno that wants to start, and since uh, OD also wants to start, Kana doesn't really get the start spot anymore. So I think it's more like in the Skyrof version, it makes sense to have Kana first, but it doesn't in this version, and then she ended up being lost. Yeah, but also it's just uh, the more I play it with her loss, the more I like it because of the spread, because it just blocks the 8 damage without doing anything from Brist Bristol back, because, yeah, and stuff like that. You got you got two Bolt of Damocles. Normally we see one. Is it like you combo it with Incarnation of Salamani, or is it just you feel that the extra Bolt sometimes wins you more games than only using one? I mean, it's both. Uh, like I sometimes I win games because I get to both two different lanes. Sometimes it's because I get to drop a Salamne and drop two bolts on the same lane. Sometimes I break eighty because I drop Salamne and like the final I won because I dropped Salamne and three prey of the weeks because I hadn't gotten them earlier and just two bolts on the same lane and it just so it's it's just uh, to make it my win conditions more versatile. Looking back at your uh, your artifact career, so to say, I see you've had a few uh, good results in the past. You know, be it in ESL, be it in Mainline.gg, and so on. Unfortunately, some of these events don't exist anymore. And um, this was also the final brain scans tournament, if I uh, interpreted the information correctly. How uh, how do you see constructed moving forward? Do you think there's uh, is there any Reason to keep practicing since it seems like the ABL will be the sole tournament organizer for the future and they focus on limited. What are your plans for now? I mean, I play artifacts for, artifact for fun and I compete for fun. So it's like I will play constructed tournaments when they come up, but it's, I have no like plans for it or I don't, I have no idea how the situation will look forward. Mm -hmm. Um, Kerry, Kerry has said in the past that, uh, that green was like ketchup. I don't know if you've heard that uh, in previous episodes. Oh God, not this! Come so, on. <laughs> <laughs> so my question to you is: if if green is like ketchup, what do you think mono blue is like? Uh, <laughs> um, 
Or, or I, I guess, what's your favorite sauce? Oh, please don't come on! Don't answer this. Come on. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. I have no idea what to say. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. Damn it! This is obviously a lost opportunity to create a new meme. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I make like one constructive, interesting comment, and everyone bashes on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any shout outs, man? Yeah, for the weekly artifact constructed tournaments on Mondays, join us. We need more players. <laughs> We're usually like 20 people, and they bail to Artifact Bitcoin League. Great, thanks. Yeah. As always, I would like to say that uh, if you guys uh, listen to the cast and enjoy it, I would like you to uh, you know give us a follow and leave us a review. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, yeah, we're going to try to keep bringing you weekly content here. Uh, let us know if you have any suggestions or ideas or feedback. Thanks. Once again, we, I just want to thank Mez for joining us and talking with us. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. Thanks. See you guys all next week.